Listen, we gotta talk. The video you're about to watch, the rant you're about to watch, has a happy ending. I will tell you about that after the rant. Stay tuned. The company made good. The printer now works. All right, welcome back to Advanced Geekery. My name is David Gewertz, and today we're going to talk about something that, I mean, really this should be between me and the 3D printer vendors, but y'all can kind of stay here and hang out. This program is sponsored in part by the Advanced Geekery Weekly Newsletter. Want exclusive access to my latest ZDNet articles, behind-the-scenes updates on my projects, and must-watch YouTube videos curated just for you? How about fascinating reads from around the web and a chance to have your own project spotlighted? It's all in the newsletter. And the best part? Subscribing is absolutely free. Don't wait. Click the link below to get your weekly issue and make it awesome. And I'm talking Creality, Anycubic, Elegoo. <clears throat> Can you see this? Do you see this part here? That's the broken doll. Yep. The uh, Cobra 3 combo that I was sent by Anycubic, bad motherboard. The K2 Plus that I was sent by Creality, I had to disassemble the entire thing, field strip it, and rebuild it because the build plate the entire structure of the build plate was broken. This one arrived, belt's broken. What's going on with you folks? I mean, you're sending these to reviewers. I mean, you're sending them to consumers too, but you're sending them to reviewers and you can't seem to ship machines that aren't broken. Of the last four machines that came in here for a review, three of them were dead on arrival. And not just dead on arrival like they wouldn't boot, but I mean broken in some way. And you can't say that this has to do with a shipping problem. I mean, the, 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 the K2 Plus, which had a, a structural break, yeah, you could maybe make the case that it was dropped. But the Cobra 3, it was a motherboard issue. They had to send me a replacement motherboard. That took months. This, this is not because somebody dropped it. This was because it somehow made it out of the factory without being looked at, N not even tested, just looked at. So, you know, and, and the interesting thing is, is that the, the, the 3D printer vendors reach out to, to those of us reviewing their products and are like, please review it soon. No, I'm not gonna review it soon because I can't review it soon because the thing arrives broken. So instead of Elegoo getting the review that they were hoping for, and I had expected a, a rather positive review because it's Elegoo and they make pretty decent printers, they're getting this. I don't know what's going on. I mean, I know we have all the trade issues and tariffs and all that stuff, but that is no excuse for shoddy manufacturing. It really isn't. And I mean, where's the QA? I mean, power it up. Look at it. Does it run? Open it up and look inside. Is there a belt attached properly? I mean, I know there's a rush to get these out. And I know that, that every product built has to be built with a certain cost structure so that it's profitable. And this is a very inexpensive printer with a lot going for it. But I mean, come on, it's unusable. It's completely unusable. Now, what am I going to do with it? I don't know. I sent a note to Elegoo saying, what next? But... Do I somehow package it back up, take my time, put it in a box, pack it up, drive it all the way over to the UPS people and send it back? Do I try to figure out a way to dispose of this or do I have another three hour surgery where I have to try to figure out how to fix that thing? I don't know. I'm not amused. And I'm not amused because this is not the first time. It's not the second time. It's not even the third time. It's just the third time this year that these things arrive completely unusable. And, and what are consumers to do? I mean, somebody gets this thing, they save up and they're looking forward to it and they have great expectations and they open it up and they see that. And they may or may not get any decent contact from the support folks 
because sometimes my interaction as a reviewer with the support folks is a little dicey. And consumers are always talking about how, how much trouble they're having with support from all of the vendors. It's not just Elegoo, it's not just Creality, it's not just Anycubic, it's all of them. With the possible exception of Bamboo, because my Bamboo actually arrived working. Surprise. That was the fourth printer. That one actually worked. Um, what, what are consumers to do with this kind of stuff? I mean, you know, they might even try to, a consumer who's never used a 3D printer might even try to turn this thing on. The belt might do even weirder stuff. And what are they going to do? This has to stop. And that's my message to 3D printer makers. Stop it. Fix it. Stop shitting. <laughs> stop shipping bad gear. Make it work. I mean, your, your designs are great. Your products are, are generally, when they work, great. Get some QA. Get some people to look at it and test it. Get better at this. Do it now. So now for the rest of the story. I reached out to Elegoo and told them what the situation was, and they agreed to send me a new printer. They also sent me a prepaid UPS form so that I can box up the damaged printer and send that back to them. So they made good. Now, I'm not entirely sure whether they made good because I'm a reviewer or not, but I will tell you some of the things that you should keep in mind. The company does have a 14-day return policy and a 365-day warranty, but they're very careful to say that the warranty does not cover things if you repair it yourself. Now, when I first told Elegoo about the problem, they suggested I repair it myself, and they sent me a video that basically involved stripping this thing down to its component atoms and rebuilding it back up. I told them that I wasn't going to do that, so they sent me a printer. Uh, but do not, if, if you get something like this and it's in a damaged condition, don't touch it. Take pictures and get a hold of the, of the support, Elegoo support, Creality support, any cubic support, whoever it is that, that you got your printer from. Get a hold of them first before you try tinkering with it because tinkering with it and trying to repair it could in fact void your warranty or could make it ineligible for return. Now, again, I'm a reviewer, so I can't tell you the experience, but Elegoo has a very good reputation, and frankly, so does Creality and Ecubic. They've been very good to deal with, and most people who have their printers like them, although you can find a few people who go completely off on their own version of a rant, but the same is true of Bamboo. Um, so, you know, it depends. Customer service is generally adequate, and on a case by case basis, it's not. And those are the chances you take with any product you buy. In any case, so they sent me this new one. I set it up. It's set up easily. I mean, I just took it out of the box and pulled off the, the, the three screws that hold the build plate on. And boom, it was there. It worked. Plugged it in, and it was up and running. I've printed uh, Benchy, which looks really nice. And I printed a version of itself that is a poop shoot for the back. That also looks really nice. So far, I've done both off of the internal storage of the machine. I haven't yet hooked up and printed any of my own stuff because I just got it working like 10 minutes ago. But I wanted to let you know what was going on. Now, since then, the Anycubic S1 has failed again. So right now, the Anycubic S1 has been field stripped, and I'm trying to pull out and rebuild the, the extruder because the Anycubic S1 fails hmm, every other print project. Um, which is not a good situation. It's very inexpensive compared to what it really does. And so you got to take that into account. But still, it's not a good situation. Um, but it's repairable. That one does not require being reduced to its component atoms. It just requires getting to teeny weeny screws behind wires that you can barely reach. But if I can't do it, I can get some help and put it together. But I've, I'm pretty good at putting these things together. And this is the sort of situation that all of these pieces of equipment require. And the fact is, is whether it was a 3D printer or a sewing machine. I mean, I've seen people have to take up sewing machines and rebuild the little fiddly stuff as well. You know, so I mean, it's a mechanical device and mechanical devices, especially mechanical devices made at consumer prices, have reliability issues from time to time. Net, 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 this is, uh, these, these are great pieces of technology. You can get an incredible amount done with them. Uh, 
I can't recommend people don't do 3D printing because occasionally they're a pain because 3D printing is awesome. Uh, so, you know, and this is, is under 300 bucks for a completely enclosed, many different types of filament supported printer. Now, it's a little weird because it doesn't have uh, an AMS, a multi-filament feeder, yet it has all the attributes of a multi-filament printer. So we're going to figure that one out in the review. But um, there you go. The state of 3D printing today. For Advanced Geekery, my name is David Gewertz. Go out there and print something awesome and call tech support if you have any problems before you tinker. Bye-bye.